the walkthrough of the Requestly platform. So when you sign up, you'll come to this onboarding screen. Um, basically, if you're using Client, WooCode, or Open Web UI with direct integrations, which makes it really easy to use any model with any of those solutions. So for example, if you have a custom integration, what you can do is just, we have an open AI compatible code where you just change the base URL and you can use any of our uh, models with that open AI compatible code. The only thing you need to do is create an API key just here. So once you create an API key, I'm going to call this cool. For example, you need to copy this and you could use it anywhere basically. Um, and it says you all set. So one of the first functionalities are basically the models, which models can you use? So from O3 mini to OpenAI to Claude, you can see the whole model list here. So you can search, but you can also change the view. You can see for Cloud 3.7 Sonnet, we have um, 12 different versions uh, because we provide different versions with reasoning, like medium or low or high, for example. You can see how much you've spent on that model. You can see, does the provider use it for retention, data retention? So do they keep the data? Do they use it for trading? Yes or no. Uh, what's really interesting as well is that you can see um, usage stats. So how are our users using those different models for different use cases? So this is front-end development, back-end development, this is data processing for documentation, DevOps, uh, and so on. So the next part is all about managing your API keys. So what can you do here? Yeah, don't look at the API key names. I usually just use test for testing. But um, what, what can you do here is you could put monthly limits uh, on your API keys. You can also disable logging if you don't want logging. You can just also delete your API key with the logs if needed. But what you'll see here, the most interesting is policies and features. So within policies, you can ask, you can do two types, two types of policies. The first one is a fallback. What is a fallback? Is basically if the provider, the first provider doesn't work, go to the second provider and so on. So for example, we can go here to a DeepSeek uh, reasoner, which is a R1 model of DeepSeek, add it as a model. And here say, if that doesn't work, go to Nebius. If that doesn't work, uh, maybe go to deep info. Um, what you'll see as well is the pricing. So you can see the cheapest is obviously R1, then it's Nebulous, then it's deep infra. And you can call this R1, for example. Now, this uh, policy R1 is the model name you will use either in your code or in any of our integrations. Uh, we have some really cool features that we have with uh, Rucode and Klein, uh, such as prompt optimizations, which you can see here, which shaves up to 90% of system prompt tokens. Uh, we can remove the MCP prompt and also optimize system tokens. Now, secondly is the logs. Basically, uh, if you enable logs, we can keep all of the logs and you can see the system prompt, you can see the user prompt, um, all of the exact, exact logs that you've been having uh, with those different API keys. You can enable specific API key or look for specific, or uh, see all of them. Uh, and you can also see like, okay, who was the provider? Was it stream or not? Uh, what was the temperature selected? And then you'll see them in all the labels. If you don't see the temperature, that means it wasn't enabled um, in that request. Um, then the next part is cost management. So keeping track of your cost is a really big thing for both individual users and companies uh, with multiple companies using this for all of their engineers, for example, or uh, they use it for all of their AI products. So they can monitor exactly uh, what is going on. So you can see here, my total cost was $2.59, 175 requests. This is the average cost per request. And I've used about 27 models. So you can see both my cost over time and my token usage. What's really interesting is that I have a breakdown per model. Um, if there's caching enabled with a provider, we'll also show you how much we're able to cache. Um, so for example, with a topic, that's a 10X price reduction. Um, so you can see, been testing a lot of models. Uh, once you go to the advanced analytics, you can get a bit more advanced um, uh, metrics, basically. Uh, one of the, my favorite ones is the output tokens per second. So if you go to output tokens per second, this is basically the average per day, uh, and I switch to totals, you can see per model how fast they are. You can see O3 mini, 182, uh, Gemini, Gemini, Claude, and so on. So if your application depends on a high output tokens per second, this is really useful um to keep track of so yeah that's that's basically it that's